Welcome back to War Academy, Warriors of the Imperium. There's one thing 40k has taught me in my over 25 years of playing this game, is that the meta is focused on the pilot. The pilot isn't focused on the meta. I hope this video shows you that memorizing all your unit stats is very, very different than understanding your unit stats. Make sure you like and subscribe. So let's do this. We're not here to talk about your gladius detachment. We're here to talk about the unsung heroes of the Imperium. And even better than gladius is the Iron Storm detachment. There's absolutely a ton of things that make the Iron Storm detachment, in my opinion, a lot better than gladius. Starting with the fact that they basically get a free ZP every time a unit activates. Have you ever guys fought Eldar? Known how, like, it doesn't even matter when they roll dice. It's not their strands of fate that are making them so strong. It's the fact that they reroll a hit and a wound roll. And even the Wish.com version of that rule, like Iron Storm Detachment gets, is incredibly powerful. So powerful that when this rule rears its ugly head in 40k, they usually have to get rid of it in past editions. Man! Awesome! Man! Ask yourself next time you're playing Gladius, after you're done shooting your last cannons or whatever have you, just would it be cool if you had a reroll right now on one of those wound rolls? And normally this rule is something that mainly affects shooting armies, but Space Marines have some decent melee. It works in melee too. You can actually get double the juice out of this. Now I've been doing a lot of Space Marine testing to make and prepare myself for this video. And this rule, the Iron Storm Detachment is so powerful that I've been, my best Space Marine army currently is nothing but two wound infantry models in an Iron Storm Detachment. And if you didn't know, every single stratagem that the Iron Storm Detachment gets basically involves a vehicle, but I don't need none of that. Hands down, this is one of the most busted rules in 40K that for some reason keeps coming back. The, the reason why I don't need the stratagems for Iron Storm Detachment with my pure infantry army is the best strats are things like Armor of Contempt, throwing a grenade, popping smoke. Smoke. Like, I have grenades on there twice for some reason because it's that powerful. Grenades are something that every time you get a chance to throw a grenade, you should be doing it. So it doesn't stop there. They have some, they have some really sick enhancements that you can use for your vehicles when you bring them including the turn and damage to zero enhancement which is by far the best one that they get access to the reason why this is so powerful is i don't care if you have a four up feel no pain or a better involved i mean the fact that i can see oh shit you just rolled a six on your damage on that last hey, i'm gonna turn that to zero so you get to see the damage first and then turn it to zero and that is powerful on something like a Redemptor Dreadnought that's already so hard to kill. The other good enhancement that's worth investing into is they get an enhancement for advance and shoot. So this will let you get things like if you have multiple Dreadnoughts, you can get them up there and start threatening those middle objectives. The other enhancements usually aren't too worth it in a vehicle army, but as far as stratagems, they get a stratagem that uh, makes a vehicle explode. And it is super fun. I that's that's just that's a fun factor of a 10 out of 10 in my book. Statistics also show that people who just subscribe and like the video just tend to roll more sixes on their next game. Go figure. The world treats you good when you treat other people good. Who knows, maybe bad karma is just the reason you're losing games. And this is the first step to fixing that. But there is one more combo that I, I've been using. It's a different enhancement. They can dig an enhancement for 10 points that's called the Flesh is Weak. Flesh is Weak gives you a four up feel no pain. And I've come up with, it's one of the most fun characters I've ever fielded in all of 40k. And I name him Captain Chungus. So the captain in Gravis armor, he's got six wounds. He also comes with a native four up invuln and half damage. When you give him the flesh is weak, that gives him an additional four up feel no pain. So how the, the math works on that, you got your little 90 point character unit and people are like, oh, your character, I can see him, I'm gonna kill him. It's like, dude, go ahead and try. Just the nature of having a four up feel no pain, it's kind of like doubling your wounds. So it's not a six wound captain, it's kind of a 12 wound captain with a four up inbound that also halves damage. The damage mitigation on this guy is absolutely insane. And you don't have to feel, I like to feel them solo just so he can go off on his own adventure. I don't care what he does. If he goes, he might do an action. He might go tie something up. He's just gonna go off on his own mythical quest. But he can also be fielded with heavy intercessors. So if you just want the Chungus squad and be like, I want this objective and you're gonna put your foot down, it's like 
just letting your body go limp when someone tries to drag you away. So all in all, guys, I highly, highly recommend you give Ironstorm a shot and really focus on the MSU. How you break Ironstorm the most is by taking as many units as possible so you can really abuse that reroll a hit or a wound or a damage roll. So this means you're trying to avoid putting characters with units most of the time and you're trying to avoid ever doubling up a unit. You're also trying to keep your units on the cheaper side. But next for underrated Space Marine combos, I wanna talk about So overall, keyword smoke is incredibly strong. Smoke. And there's so many circumstances where smoke is stronger than armor of contempt. So if you have something like a land raider, making the decision, you gotta look at your opponent's army and what's about to shoot you and decide, is it better that I smoke right now? Or is it better that I armor of contempt? Smoke. And is it worth two CP to do both? If you spend two CP on a land raider that smokes and casts armor of contempt, that thing ain't dying. That, that's gonna live till the next turn. But two CP is a really heavy investment. Um, you get, you're a lot more resistant to everything when you smoke versus a lot more resistant to anti-tank guns specifically when you armor contempt. Today, smoking is gonna save lives. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video too, but the stratagem you need to use, I don't care what your stratagems are, you need to grenade every single time you can. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. So many armies from, you should look at something like Eldar have so many units with keyword grenade and keyword smoke, it really surprised me, but almost every Space Marine unit has keyword grenades unless it's a turn they have to have basically movable fingers so like you can't throw a grenade with a power fist or you know terminator armor on but the uh most units in the space marine have this grenade and just to give you an idea of the power of this is if grenade was spend a cp and then do d3 mortal wounds to your opponent i would still do it but this averages three mortal wounds it has just as like likely to spike to four as it is to downgrade to two but i mean that's generally better than d3 wounds every single time um this is the version of tank shock that infantry get and when you if you have the cp if you're tank shocking and throwing a grenade who that's scary let me paint a picture real quick you got an assault jump pack intercessors and they run up to a unit and they throw a grenade and um, then over here you also got a brutalis dreadnought so it you then go to charge you charge in the intercessors they do mortal wounds on their charge the brutalis charges in he does mortal wounds on his charge plus he tank shocked you just did four sources of mortal wounds that are all averaging two or above that that alone can destroy some of the toughest units in the game and you haven't even attacked yet but yeah combining that combining all four of those grenade with tank shock this just is devastating to be on the receiving end of but this does start to get expensive cp wise which is why you can see i don't mind that i can't use Iron Storm Detachment Stratagems in my infantry spam list because I've got plenty to use. There is an alternative to save yourself a CP so you don't have to use Smoke Grenade at Munch, and that's a unit I never see called Suppressors. So a lot of you guys don't play Dark Angels, and I'm sorry. Dark Shroud's amazing, but you can have Wish.com Dark Shroud in Suppressors at 85 points, these things are actually surprisingly good. I don't recommend using them in vehicle lists, so keep them to your more you know, two wound spam, you know, Primaris list. But if you fire one suppressor at the target that's your opponent's most dangerous thing, and then the two suppressors at whatever they should shoot at, and you give them minus one to be minus one to hit on their next shooting phase. So if your opponent is fielding something big, and I don't know why, I think it's really moronic, but people seem to like fielding really big units right now hit him with minus one to hit and you're gonna take way less damage these guys also have the deep strike ability so when you set them up you can put them at the top of a ruin and just look for any ruin on the battlefield go all the way to the top of it as long as you're six inches up in the air and now you don't suck as much and your guns are actually ap2 instead of ap1 um that's where i think a lot of people got a bad taste in their mouth with these guys is i don't think they heard about the 10th edition update so an auto cannon it's like strength nine, AP one, damage three right now with three shots each. These guys 
are for some reason only damage two and they're called an accelerated auto cannon now how it's supposed to work in the lore is that an accelerated auto cannon is a faster shooting auto cannon and in the past it's gained plus one ap so whereas an auto cannon is normally ap1 accelerated auto cannons are normally ap2 but do the exact same thing I guess these guys were sleeping when 10th edition came out, they didn't hear about the autocannon update, and they still have 9th edition ones. Hopefully GW will fix that. If they do, these guys are going to be worth more around the 115 point range, but at 85 points for the poor man's autocannon, that's not bad, especially because they're there to put minus one to hit on your opponent's scariest things. Not saying these things are oh, this is the best unit, but it's a unit I'm really surprised I'm not seeing more of because disruption is so important. You can't just punch your opponent and hope that you win. Like you got to disrupt your opponent constantly and anything you can do to make his plans not work. It's definitely worth 85 points. And these guys also have keyword smoke. So like I said, just make sure you review the units that you guys are using right now and check out if they have keyword grenade and keyword smoke because you'd be surprised at some of the units that do. Are you smoking yet? But when you're hitting way above your weight class, it's important that you can take a hit as well. And that's why one of my favorite units which belongs to the Raven Wing is the Dark Shroud. I was fielding this thing at 140 points. I mean, it's people go Vanguard Detachment because that minus one to hit is so sexy. Minus one to hit is one of the best buffs in the game. And I was fielding my Dark Shroud like 140 points, and that was no problem to give my most important things, the things that my opponent really wants to kill, minus one to hit. And because no one's using it, they lowered it to 115. 115 points. It's got a six inch aura of minus one to hit. That's six inches in each direction and the model itself is a good three inches long so that's six inches plus six inches plus three inches like this thing is reaching almost half of the board no matter what tough unit you're taking you should always be feeling something to to fill that role of a tank and it just makes your tanky stuff tankier plus players go way out of their way too far out of their way to try to kill this thing and when they see oh my guns are minus one to hit they tend to go for it but the thing is that what usually happens is by turn but definitely by turn three i don't need the dark shot anymore and i'm just trying to be as annoying with it as possible making him really have to go out of his way to get shots to it i don't know why everybody wants to kill it so bad it's really tough to kill especially now that it's down at 215 points it's just not worth going for it most of the time And another underrated Space Marines unit that I just think needs a lot more play is these new Company of Heroes. So I usually run Asriel with Company of Heroes. As far as I can tell, you can do that. Um, the, the, the app says you can, it's a little bit confusing, but Asriel, Company of Heroes, is an amazing unit. The smoke die! Awesome shit's a confab! Yes, it's a suspicious book! Is he good to the floor? Make him repent! So when you put a, a chapter master with a company of heroes, the whole the squad gets minus one to be wounded. And that is incredibly, incredibly strong, especially considering each model has four wounds. Asriel's there giving them a four up inbound. What normally happens is I kind of put I usually tend to put them in a stupid spot. I want my opponent to go for them. Usually in my army, they are one of my most expensive things because Asriel's 100 points plus 95 for the Company of Heroes, which is, I don't like fielding 200 point units usually, but in this, this case, like people go for them and it doesn't work. They'll kill the Company of Heroes if they put a lot of effort into them, but they, I've not seen an army yet that's been able to shoot down the Company of Heroes plus Asriel. Then Asriel sneaks away, Hides behind and ruin the rest of the game, just generating me CP. And meanwhile, that was a lot of firepower that wasn't going into the rest of my army. I do tend to combine this with the Dark Shroud, because just having a unit that's got four wounds a model at minus one to hit, minus one to wound, that's that's tough to bring down. You don't have to use Azrael if you don't have Azrael. You can use, you know, whichever character you want that can go with the company of heroes. Um all in all, this the minus one to be wounded. That's that's a powerful, powerful buff in this game. Did I mention the heavy bolter that it comes with is a three damage heavy bolter. So if you guys haven't, you need to watch my last video on why you still suck at 40K, where I talk about how to properly theme your army and why it's important. So 
this is going to break it down there are basically four flavors of what i consider the best anti-tank that space marine have access to and with the tanks just tanks are very popular in the meta and you have to be able to kill a knight army if you want to be able to keep your head above water at a tournament. But when you can kill a knight army, at the same time, you also have to be able to fight 300 gaunts or a gene stealer call army that's just pure horde. And that's the balance that makes a take all comers list a little bit difficult. So making your anti-tank as point efficient as possible is very important and also making sure that it meshes correctly with your army. So first up, if you're looking for cheap anti-tank, the best cheap anti-tank unit that space marines have access to is the 75 point eliminators so these guys the 75 points is a steal and they basically get like wish.com last cannons is what i like to call them they're not quite as good as a regular last cannon because they're only strength nine but the these things can chunk tanks especially when you have the Iron Hands detach or the Iron Storm detachment, and you get that reroll because when these guys don't move, they hit on twos. If you feel like investing a little bit more points or you got some extra points to put into your anti tank, I would highly suggest considering Devastators. Now, I would not bring Devastators if it was a mainly vehicle list or if you have a bunch of vehicles, but when you have a ton of infantry rushing your opponent, he doesn't have the firepower or the dice to, to go for those Devastators, and he's got to choose. Does he? kill you know your two wound action monkeys your two wound primary holders or your two wound anti like everything units that you have like you had having devastators i do tend to use these guys with last cannons just to make them even more annoying so they can reach that 48 inches and start to create overlapping fields of fire where i can just sit them there so next up is if you're running a vehicle army and you, you know, the Devastators will not work in a vehicle army. So instead, I highly recommend the Ballistus Dreadnought. And it's 20 points more than what the Devastators would be. And you basically get the four last cannons still. The, uh, the advantage to the Ballistus and basically what you're getting for that extra 20 points is the fact that if you take damage, you don't lose a gun. Whereas the Devastators, as they start to take damage, they're going to completely lose a last cannon model, which starts to make their output a lot lower. But yeah, if you got mostly vehicles in your army, there's a lot of the same exact opposite of the Devastators. It, it, your opponent only has so much anti-tank that he can shoot. And yeah, you can shoot your Ballistas, but he might have to shoot that Brutalis that's running right at him instead. But there's one more really point efficient unit that this also goes really well with vehicle armies, but I tend to focus it more on Gravis themed Space Marines. So if you're going like majority of your core army is Gravis, the fire strikes turrets are actually amazing. Fire! 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 <laughs> They're 10 points more than the ballistas for two of them. And you basically get four last cannons again, except this time they're twin linked. So as you can see, we got a cheap alternative for Devastators in an infantry army with the Eliminators, or you could just upgrade them to Devastators. In a vehicle army, you got the Ballistas and the Fire Strike Servo Turrets. And these things all fit different styles and you need to know which one's actually best for your army. But I want to talk a little bit more about these in detail, mainly the Eliminator. So the Eliminator, like I said, I called the, the Wish.com last cannon. And that's mainly because it's strength nine, AP three, damage D six. So the unit itself is gonna get three shots with that at ballistic skill two when it doesn't move and as well as uh, devastating wounds. Well, it's not technically ballistic skill. They get, they're ballistic skill three with heavy. So hitting on twos is what I meant to say. They're very, very good against things like Gravis Marines and lighter tanks and speeders. Not so good once you get up to that toughness 10. So these guys do have the infiltrate rule, which means you can get them into certain spots they wouldn't normally be able to get to. For example, six inches up in a ruin, get that extra, you know, extra AP. You got AP four strength nine guns now. And like I mentioned, they also have stealth, that permanent, permanent minus one to hit. <laughs> is on a 75 unit just makes these things even more not worth going after and that's one of their biggest strengths is they tend to last till the end of the game But then we have their bigger brothers, the Devastators. And the Devastators, I think I think of any unit in the whole entire Codex, the most unsung hero is the Devastators. These things are absolutely nuts for how much firepower you get for only 120 points. I'm mainly a Xenos player. I play every single Xenos army plus Space Marines and Guard. And the I look at my other armies with a lot of jealousy 
I just want Devastators in so many of my armies. So normally, I just go with the four last cannon shots from way downtown. I first turn, I set them up into that good position, and then I plant my feet to just be able to hit on threes, and they also will get that extra AP, or they ignore cover, I'm sorry, when they don't move. So it's like having an extra AP. Their rule lets them turn a miss into a six with their sergeant, and that's where the, the damage really starts to come up, why they are actually a lot more point efficient than other things at 120 points. I mean, 120 points and you get four last cannon shots. One of them can be turned into a six. If you're Iron Storm, you know, you can reroll one of the wound dice. So if you're shooting your oath target, you're basically are rerolling hits, rerolling one of your failed wounds. And this, <laughs> this is really, really reliable. Like I mentioned, these are really hard to deal with in infantry spam lists, but they do lose firepower as they suffer wounds. One of the really cool things they can do is the overwatch potential that these guys have. So if you overwatch someone with your four last cannons, four shots trying to hit on a six, there's a more than a 50% chance that you should get one six. If you don't get any sixes, then an Iron Storm reroll gets you Technically, five chan tries to get a six, and then you're going to take the sergeant and flip one into a six. So there's a very, very good likelihood. There's a very high likelihood that you're going to get two sixes. So when you roll the wound, I mean, because it's the last cannon, you're going to be wounding most things on three. If you hopefully haven't used that Iron Storm reroll yet, there's a really good chance you're going to get make them take two last cannon saves during their own turn. That's that's really strong Overwatch potential. But aside from the last cannons, these, this is a great rapid ingress unit. Um, you can do things like put them in a drop pod with four grab guns or four multi-meltas. And yeah, these guys are gonna die because they're probably gonna be way overextended. And you know, people love killing devastators because they're dangerous. It, having grab guns just show up, especially when grab guns are in a ruin, and then the grab guns become AP2 because they're six inches up in a ruin, and then they're still damaged three guns with three shots each. Oh, that's that's nasty. You don't want to bring these guys in a vehicle list. I can't stress that enough. They will die. So instead, bring the ballistas for just 20 points more. So it's really similar to the Devastators. It's just the vehicle variant of the Devastators. It's got two last cannons and two poor man last cannons. So pretty much the same with its rule. It's about the same as the Devastators. It's great for going for the non-oath targets because its ability lets it reroll hits against fresh targets. So generally you're gonna wanna deploy this guy. So if you know, like have a plan when you're playing Space Marines, like I'm probably gonna oath this, then that, then this, put him on the other side and he's gonna basically keep your oaths going almost with his rule. I think the Blissus is a great model. It's real only downside is that it's, well obviously it doesn't have melee, but it's really bad in lists that don't have enough Gravis Marines or enough vehicles because your opponent's just looking for something to shoot his anti-tank guns at. And of my favorite four, the last one I want to talk about is the weird turrets that no one ever uses. So these things get four shots at strength 10 last cannons. I don't know why they're only strength 10. I guess that would be too overpowered if they were real last cannons. But they hit on twos. I think it's because they're a turret. But they, yeah, they hit on twos with twin link. That's really freaking strong. On top of that, these guys have a total of 12 wounds at toughness six with a two plus save. So they're in cover, it's like they have a one up save. They're a lot harder to bring down than most people expect. And that's why the toughness six is why they just, they meld so well with a Gravis heavy army. Your opponent's gonna have guns that are good against toughness six models, like strength 12 guns and things. And if you give him too many toughness six models to shoot at, he's only got so many of those guns. And that's your target to kill. Once that's gone, you can basically free roam the battlefield. The special rule for these little weird turrets is that they overwatch on fours. And this is surprisingly better than it sounds. Um, the fact that they're overwatching on fours and then you get to reroll their wounds. If you combine that again with the Iron Storm detachments, so you can reroll a hit that that's reliable. The most powerful thing you can ever do in 40k is to kill, to, I should probably use in the word unalive, to unalive your opponent's units when it's his own turn. When it's not your turn to be doing things and you're unaliving his stuff, that's, it's absolutely how you can get ahead in a game, any game. You can be losing horribly and get ahead just by doing things like this. I don't quite understand how, but it does have a three inch movement. So you can reposition this thing when, I remember when this model came out, 
I just for the longest time assumed it couldn't move. I don't know why you think it everything has a movement, but yeah, I guess they pick it up and carry it. Three inch movement is just, that's all you need to really get the position. This thing shoots really far. Of the anti-tank options that I listed, it is the most expensive flavor. The, uh, you're mainly just using for those Gravis lists. There is other options. There's things like, you know, the Lancers, and there's a lot of different anti-tank guns that Space Marines have but they all kind of fit into one of these four categories. The Lancer's a more expensive version of the Ballistas, basically. So just because I mentioned these four, it's not like these are the only four to use. There's plenty of good ones. I'm here to tell you about the underrated things that I'm really surprised people aren't using more of. Do you guys know that if you scroll down, if you hit the subscribe button three times, it turns this really cool color green. I swear, it's a totally true fact that I just made up. And if you don't believe me, try it. So next we're going to talk about the unit that actually scored my MVP the most in all my research for this video. I usually don't like declaring damage units an MVP because I usually consider dam damage units, they don't play the game, they don't score you points, they don't hold primary or do secondaries, they're just there to do something that doesn't score you points most of the time. But damn, hell blasters. A five man of Hell Blasters can cause so much havoc in your opponent's lines. If you're not familiar, these guys get two shots of liquid hot magma. The mistake I see a lot of people using is they try to put them in a 10 man and then buff them with a carrot. That's the most horrible idea. Keep these guys as a five man. They are so much more powerful and so much more annoying when used as a five man. And that's because they're a porcupine. If you grab your porcupine, you'll get stuck with your stickers. Oh, no, no, you're right there, Timber. These things aren't there to do damage. The best thing they can do is do damage in your opponent's turn. And if you make them a high priority target, you're just not going to get that extra oomph out of them. But when you use them as just a five man cheap porcupine, they become super, super annoying because your opponent has to dedicate melee to deal with them. If he shoots them, he's going to get shot back, and that is just not an efficient way to play 40k. They, And that's what you use against your opponent. And that's why we're going to talk about the dead zone. So if you saw my other video on why you suck at 40k, I broke down the battlefield into different you know, objectives, and I named each objective. One thing I wish I would have put in that video is to talk about the dead zone. So the dead zone is this weird spot on the battlefield that's basically the worst place you could ever be. I would call it no man's land, but there's already, that's already something else. So the dead zone, I'm gonna show it. So if you look at this map, most of the time, almost every map's gonna have three objectives across the middle. This point right here, this is the furthest point away from any of those objectives. It's the dead zone. There's nothing for you here. There's no resources. Dedicating something to go to this spot is a horrible, horrible idea. And if you know that the thing you're worried about with Hellblasters is enemy melee, then put yourself in a spot where enemy melee does not want to go. This is, use this for any army that you have. This is your safest spot to shoot from on every map that you play. It's, if someone dies for you, then they're taking themselves away from the objective and no longer playing the game. They're just trying to fight you. And that's why you're trying to drag your opponent's melee units here. By putting something like Hell Blasters there, your opponent's gotta shoot it, but he's gonna wanna send his melee, especially cause it's not too far away from the middle objective, but it's gonna cause him to overextend enough that he won't be on it anymore on the side objectives. And it's also usually the farthest place away from your home objective. So if something happened, he does kill your Hell Blasters, whoopee shit. Then he's gonna get blown away next turn because every gun in your army can see his overextended ass. I remember there was a time where they started to implement reroll once to armor save into 40k and into Age of Sigmar, and they had to pull it from both games because it was considered way too powerful. If you haven't noticed, GW's done a lot to get rid of 3-up inbombs. And if you played, for example, in 8th edition, 8th edition felt like 3-up inbombs were everywhere. 7th edition, there was freaking 2-up inbombs, and it was ridiculous. But 4-up inbombs seems to be kind of the cutoff. But a 4-up inbomb that rerolls ones on saves, that's like... 
I mean, it's it's the weird math of it all, but it's similar to a three-up inbound. One of the only units I know of in the game that get this is Blade Guard. I think there might be a couple other random things for them, but the most common unit I think you'll see with this rule is Blade Guard. And this makes these guys so tanky against basically the biggest threats in the universe. I'm gonna keep talking back to my other videos because I, I put a lot of work into them. I think I had a lot to say there, but Blade Guards suck in vehicle list. And even though they kind of mimic what a Gravis unit does, like it's got the same health as Gravis and everything, they don't count as vehicle units because they're only toughness four. The fact that in any gun, from a bolt gun to a heavy bolter to a last cannon can all deal with them pretty well, means that these are the best tank unit for a two wound spam list. But if you're looking for something tanky to push up the board in a vehicle list, you're way better going with something like Heavy Intercessors. They're usually you run these guys as three man. Don't make the mistake of running these guys as a six man, please. Just please, you've watched my videos, you should know better than that. But run them as a three man. They're not a huge threat. They can push up to an objective first and screen out for some of your more expensive units. And mainly you're trying to take and embrace those charges of your opponent's biggest stuff. The best thing Blade Guard do though, is they have keyword grenade. Like I mentioned before, everybody needs a tanking unit and these aren't the ones for vehicle lists. So what are? And we're talking about heavy intercessors because these things are amazing. This is one of the tankiest, hardest to kill units in the game, hands down. I don't know what GW was thinking when they reduced the price on these things. It's because for some reason you guys aren't using them, which just boggles my mind because I bring five of these to almost every one of my games. They absolutely the best thing for holding an objective in a vehicle list. Having a dreadnought go up and have to sit on an objective. It's like, cool, your Brutalis killed all the dudes on the objective. And now he's just got to sit there because someone's got to hold the objective. In my other video on why you suck at 40K, holding the kill zone objective, I think is what people really struggle with the most because that's what your average player focuses on the most and you got to be able to beat him at that. And when you put heavy intercessors on a kill zone objective, there's a really good likelihood that he won't have the ability to remove you. The best thing that kills a Gravis Marine is a last cannon, guys. Like, if you got a Brutalis Dreadnought and a Ballistus Dreadnought and all the Dreadnoughts and you got heavy intercessors on a primary objective, those are all best killed by last cannons. He's only got so many. Like, they're toughness six, so you need strength 12, ideally. They're a three up save. So ideally you would need something that's really high AP, at least AP three. If you cast armor contempt on these guys, I mentioned Captain Chungus. Captain Chungus can lead these guys, let them armor contempt for free. And then when they're in cover, they basically have a one up save. They're OC two in the, they are, these guys are absolutely awesome. Each squad's gonna come with five of them. And these are, these are cheaper than aggressors. They're one of the cheapest Gravis Marines, and most gra time Gravis Marines get you three. You get three Gravis Marines, toughness six, three wounds. This, you get five Gravis Marines at 100 points. One of them even gets a heavy bolter. Another huge advantage to these guys, and which boggles my mind that I'm not seeing anymore, is they have assault and heavy guns. Assault guns are crazy strong in 10th edition right now, because if you have keyword assault on your guns, it means that you can advance and do an objective. Because when you go do a secondary, it says you have to be eligible to shoot. And if you have an assault gun, you're eligible to shoot after you advance. So these guys can dip and still do a secondary, which is something not a lot of units in this game can do. And if they're doing what they just do best, which is holding the objective, they just plant their feet and hit on twos. And if you want some extra frosting on your cake, they're OC2. There's a lot of off meta units that I feel like could be winning major tournaments. Just people aren't using the Space Marine Codex is a very, very good codex, but I consider it a very difficult codex because it makes people make wrong choices a lot in the list building process. So I wanna talk about some honorable mentions. So first honorable mention goes to the Assault Intercessors with jump packs and grenades and their charged mortal wounds. I kind of mentioned it before, but the fact that these guys can just deep strike somewhere safe. So like they'll deep, if you're gonna go for a, say you go for your opponent's home objective, don't deep strike and try to charge. Deep strike, you can deep strike up to 18 inches away and usually still be safe. So if you deep strike say 18 inches away from your opponent's home objective, somewhere nice and safe where nothing can see you, and then next turn, you're able to move 12 inches, which gives you six inches between you. You throw a grenade, because it's got a six inch range. Now you have a nice and easy six inch charge, which you then do mortal wounds again on the charge. 
and then you get to attack with a bunch of chainsaws. Like, that's gonna destroy most people's home objectives, and there's not a lot he can do unless he brings something back to screen. At 85 points, absolute steal. But you can also use Assault Intercessors to just follow up. I think there's a lot of games where putting them into Deep Strike is not the correct answer. You shouldn't always be trying to go for your opponent's home. If you control your home objective, plus one objective in the middle, so just one of one of them in the middle, that's 10 points a turn. That's a 40 point primary out of your maximum 50. Like that's pretty damn good. So going for your opponent's home, a lot of times it's just a stupid move. So these guys can be used instead, if you have the room to deploy them, you can deploy them to follow up a charge. So if you put something like three blade guard, go up and hit that objective, and then somebody's gotta come and hit you with something that's able to kill three blade guard, whatever managed to do that, then gets followed up in a second wave by these jump pack guys and they have the movement that they can do this with two objectives at the same time so you can assist the middle objective or assist the left or the right and your opponent doesn't know where they're gonna hit but if i recommend you trying anything from this video just try running your list as iron hands if you do two games as an iron hands with your current space marines list when you go back to your gladius attachment or whatever it is you're doing you're gonna wish you had those rerolls so many times it spoils you rotten and i cannot go back but a big mistake people use with assault intercessors uh, the jump pack ones is they think they have a 12 inch move so they need to move 12 inches and that's that's not that's not a good idea so when you deploy you're, there's 24 inches generally between you and your opponent. So 12 inches in front of your deployment zone is the exact center of the board. So if you, an a, objective marker reaches out three inches from the center, which is already an inch. So that means if you have say a blade guard unit, which moves six inches and he's deployed right on the front line, like behind a ruin where, you know, he's not deployed like an idiot, but he only needs to roll a three on his advance to get a tiny tiny little toe on the objective so if you're looking for early game objective control units that move fast are not your answer and i see people lose games all the time because they're like oh i brought bikes and then they zip the bikes right into the opponent's army and just leroy jenkins them in and then scratch their heads and go what did i do wrong instead you put your slow units up engage them with your slow units and then use your fast units to assist the slow units that need assistance because you have the speed to reinforce multiple of them whereas you're just going to get brave hearted if you send your cavalry in first that's a dumb idea so oh! Send the infantry in so they can't make spear defenses or whatever have you and receive your charge. And then when they don't expect it, hit them from the sides with fast units. That's how you're supposed to use these. For other honorable mentions, you just gotta scroll down and look at the comments because I want you guys to put in what units have won you, like when you win your game or lose your game, like what units are generally your MVP? What units are either scoring you the most points, doing the like, carrying your army the most and if you really want to help people out put down why explain why these things are so good in your army because a lot of this is based on the pilot just because i say to use something doesn't mean it's going to fix your army if i i drive if my little honda civic that i drive that's a piece of shit were to get in a race with you and i put you in a formula one race car you know i'd beat you because as soon as the light turns green i'm gone and you don't even know how to turn yours on and that's why the pilot of a list is really really important if you if you ever hire me for coaching i do a lot of coaching i'm also really affordable by the way give me money 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 i really try to focus the lessons and the list building around the individual not it's not something that i think can ever be done to a classroom or with multiple people everybody is unique and everybody will run a different unique list it's not about knowing your stats it's about understanding your stats and if you can explain it to someone who doesn't understand it you're definitely on the right path but anything is meta depending on how much you understand something and when we hear things like goonhammer and things talk about why people take this why this is the meta they're trying to understand it for you. And that's why I think a lot of people gravitate towards those things. There's a lot in this codex. There's a lot of different ways that Space Marines can win battles. And I feel like everybody right now is very monotone and it's very black and white with this, all this Gladius stuff. There's a lot of creative things you can do with Space Marines. Remember, if you really want to earn your PhD in 40K, first step is joining our Discord. 
our Discord's all focused on helping people with each individual factions. There's pretty much a channel for any question you'll have, and you'll get responses immediately. If you're in the middle of a game and you have a rules question, our Discord will probably help you. We love trying out things on Tabletop Simulator. If you've ever wanted to learn how to use Tabletop Simulator, need someone to hold your hand while you get it all set up, again, our Discord is Discord is a great place to go to. By the way, guys, if you think you got a better meme game than me for 40K, then please post it on the Discord because this is where I grab most of my memes from. If you can make me laugh, you'll probably see your meme in another video. Bye, have a great time.